Hi guys, it is a sweltering hot day here in the end times back in South Austin, Texas for a few days and uh, hanging out here on the couch under the ceiling fan with my little dog Sancho Panza. This is Sancho in Texas and it is Saturday morning, what is it, June 11th. 2016 so Saturday is when I'm supposed to be bringing you my clueless moron roundup rant where I go on the mainstream media just to, for a few examples of how this planet's collective IQ uh, is going directly down the toilet. I haven't been on the mainstream media news since Tuesday so I haven't been able to you know save the choicest morsels so this is just what rolled off the page today after not being on the news uh, for however many days and don't worry now I think this happened before I left uh, all sorts of versions on the never-ending <coughs> string of stories about clueless morons at Yellowstone National Park well and last week wasn't some woman being run over by an elk the week before that these clueless morons uh, getting this baby buffalo and putting it in their car because they thought it was cold. They had to end up euthanizing the baby buffalo. And now we take it to a new height with all of this attention about clueless morons in Yellowstone National Park. This is the New York Times version. Yellowstone visitor dies after falling into hot spring. A 23-year-old man who walked off a boardwalk and slipped and fell into a hot spring at Yellowstone National Park has died. Do you, do you think so? This is uh, Colin Nath Nathaniel Scott of Portland uh, walked off the boardwalk and fell into the pork chop geyser. I've actually seen the pork chop geyser. Matter of fact, I'm wondering if that is the geyser that uh, I have a selfie of myself standing right beside. I know, I know the trail they're talking about here, this boardwalk uh, goes past pork chop. I'm pretty sure that somewhere I have a selfie of me standing in front of this pork chop geyser that this clueless moron, I'm sure looking for a selfie, uh, fell into. Uh, Charissa Reed, a spokeswoman for Yellowstone, said, quote, it was determined that there were no remains to recover. And there you go. The episode is the latest example of visitors, clueless morons, who have interacted with the park features or animals to sometimes disastrous results. Uh, and then it, then it just recounts some of those. Apparently 22 clueless morons have fallen into geysers at Yellowstone. Uh, from the New York Times to Time Magazine, I, love, <laughs> I don't know why I got a chuckle out of this one. This senator wants to ban meatless Mondays for the military. You go girl. This is, uh, who is this woman? This would be Iowa Senator Joni Ernst introduced legislation this week to prohibit U.S. Armed Forces facilities from establishing Meatless Mondays, suggesting that such a program might leave soldiers without adequate meat protein. There you go. So it does allow seafood, but uh, that's not good enough for the senator. Quote, our men and women in uniform should have the option to consume the protein they need, including meat, on a daily basis. 
it's no surprise that Iowa is the leader is the leader in pork production and the second largest producer of red meat overall. I thought pork was the other white meat. Uh, probably this woman uh, there in Iowa would not go for uh, Bill Gates's latest <clears throat> plan to save the planet. <clears throat> so how is Bill Gates, the world's richest man, they're claiming here, he's worth about $75 billion. Bill Gates is going to save the planet, specifically Sub-Saharan Africa. This is the world's richest honky going to save Sub-Saharan Africa. And here is how he's going to do it. Bill Gates, chickens not computers can solve poverty. Let's dig a little deeper if I can get my cursor to work. <clears throat> Want to end extreme poverty? Technology hyper-billionaire Bill Gates says the answer is chickens. <clears throat> Gates says the best thing, the best thing to improve the lives of the world's poorest is not computers or the internet, but raising a few chickens. Quote, it is pretty clear to me that just about anyone who is living in extreme poverty is better off if they have chickens. The world's richest man said. So what is, uh, let's see, they, I guess the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is partnering uh, with, with one of these aid foundations to donate 100,000 chickens to families in Sub-Saharan Africa living on less than $2 a day. The goal, he said, is to get 30% of rural families in Sub-Saharan Africa to raise improved breeds of vaccinated chickens. And you better believe this is going to get the uh, conspiracy wackos panties in a wide. Vaccinated chickens. Bill Gates, the Antichrist. The, uh, the number one leader of the New World Order's depopulation agenda, handing out 100,000 vaccinated chickens to starving Sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, yes, and of course they're hoping that they are going to breed the chickens to make more eggs and chickens. I guess they maybe will get a rooster and a couple of hens. I don't know. The goal is for to convince them not to eat the chickens. These starving families in Sub-Saharan Africa, there you give them some chickens and expect that they're going to wait around for the chickens to start doing their chicken thing and laying eggs and raising babies. And uh, I don't have a bullshit detector button anymore. I'll t I can tell you how long those chickens are going to last uh, in those mud huts. Anyway, moving along, as long as we're in sub-Saharan Africa, what is going on with Kenya's uh, you know, knocking itself out to bring power, literally electric power, to the people of Kenya. Kenya nationwide blackout caused by monkey tripping transformer. <clears throat> A nationwide blackout that hit Kenya on Tuesday was caused by a monkey tripping a transformer at a hydropower plant leading to the loss of more than 180 megawatts 
from the power grid. Uh, let's see. This is the uh, spokesman for Ken Gen. Don't even know this guy's name. Quote, we regret this isolated incident and the company is looking at ways of further enhancing security at all our power plants. Enhancing security. All right. From there, I just enjoyed the, the headlines of these two stories right next to each other. These related stories. What? Is El Nino officially dead? Okay. Here's option number one. Scientist bid farewell to a slightly underwhelming El Nino. Right next to the slightly underwhelming El Nino, we have Earth's supersized El Nino is over. There you go. I, what is going on in the great state of Texas? Since I'm in the state of Texas, I always try to include at least one story about brilliant Texans. So this is the class valedictorian uh, from the high school in, oh, in McKinney, Texas. Right here is class, this is Larissa Martinez, the most brilliant student in McKinney High School in her valedictorian speech, valedictorian, I am an undocumented immigrant. And we will see if the class Victorian is, uh, is deported back to Mexico after bragging in her valedictorian speech at a public school that she is an illegal alien. We're going to go from Texas to my home state of Georgia. And, and, and this has so many layers of clueless morons. This is man shot by police who responded to wrong address has died. So a Georgia man who was mistakenly shot by police after they showed up to the wrong house has died from his wounds. So this sounds like an open and shut case uh, of your tax dollars at work or at least the Henry County Georgia taxpayers. So this guy sitting at home by himself, the cops show up at his house and proceed to shoot and kill him as the cops arrive at the wrong house. They had the wrong address and uh, I get maybe from the dispatcher, who knows. But then you dig a little deeper into the story and you find the reason that these three armed cops killed the guy is because he came out of his house with a loaded gun pointed at them. So they're at the wrong house, not even realizing that they're there with their damn guns drawn at the wrong house, and, and, and this clueless moron walks out of his door with an armed gun pointed at the cops. You, you know, who's the clueless moron in the story here, guys? All right. Now this one is one of these, what really happened here, as long as uh, this is uh, the Chicago Police Department. A Chicago woman wrote a last note to her parents before dying, and the police destroyed it. This is again out of Time Magazine. Two parents in Chicago were devastated to learn that a year after their daughter's death, 
the city's police force destroyed the last note she ever wrote them. So apparently this was a suicide. This 19-year-old girl uh, took herself out. It doesn't say how. And she had left beside two suicide notes, one to the authorities and another personal note to her parents. And the cops just didn't see any real reason to keep it. So they just tore it up. Uh, and so, of course, now the bereaved parents, quote, it was the last I love you she ever said to us. Well, they, they didn't read the note. I mean, I'm sorry their daughter took herself out. Uh, I guess she just looked, being a 19-year-old in the year 2016, uh, looking ahead to her future here. But who the hell knows? what the girl said to her parents. Her last I love you. It could be, you, you, you know, you, you, you fucking assholes. You, you drove me to kill myself. It, you know, it could have been that some nice cop actually read the note and said, uh, we should probably just burn this thing. So her parents, uh, anyway, moving on. Prosecutors, 13-year-old Detroit boy killed over about $70. Three people were charged Thursday in the death of a 13-year-old Detroit boy who prosecutors say was beaten and choked and whose body was dumped in a vacant lot after he picked up about $70 that had been dropped outside of a convenience store. So there you go. So one of these clueless morons coming out of the 7-Eleven or wherever, uh, probably high as damn kites on, on bath salts or something, uh, dropped their damn money this kid picked up the money they dropped I, so the, the security cameras caught all this they saw the kid pick up their money this is a 45 year old man a 26 year old man and a 43 year old woman uh, instead of just getting their money back they grabbed the kid threw him in a car, took him away in their car. They are now facing charges of murder, unlawful imprisonment, kidnapping, torture, and gun crime. Oh, Jesus. I think we've heard enough about that story. What is People Magazine? Oh my God, guys, I had a, uh, in the airplane. I'm gonna do a, a quick rant here in a minute. Uh, but anyway, I think this is one of the articles that I read on the airplane in People Magazine, which is a whole nother rant. See, Princess Charlotte make her Buckingham Palace balcony debut along Big Brother Prince George. Picture perfect, Princess Charlotte made her much anticipated <coughs> balcony debut when she appeared at Buckingham Palace. The one year old princess, whom Princess Kate described as cute but feisty, joined her nearly three year old brother. Prince George, a balcony pro, and parents William and Kate as they capped a morning of parades and festivities for the annual celebration known as Trooping the Color, blah, 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 and it goes on from there. 
Uh, but that's all I can stomach. Could not, uh, haven't heard much about Paula Abdul recently. Paula Abdul, what is going on with her? I guess she is now a judge on the, this Fox News entertainment program called Dance. Absolutely love this story. Excited dance contestant vomits on Paula Abdul. An overwhelmed 12-year-old contestant who passed her audition on So You Think You Can Dance expressed her excitement for winning the audition by vomiting on Judge Paula Abdul. Abdul remarked, I have never had anyone vomit on me like that. Uh, I guess the, the embarrassed youngster said Abdul had squeezed her a bit too tight and quote, all the happiness came out on her jacket. But we're going to close. I just, uh, I, I just love this photo. You, you know, sometimes, sometimes a photo says a thousand words. And, uh, this little dog. There. I just, uh, I, I, I don't know. There, there's just something about this, this photo. Uh, you know, it's amazing what animals can get away with that, uh, that, it, you know, if, if, if I tried this, or dude, if you tried this, uh, you would be somewhere between getting punched in the face and arrested. But, uh, that little chimpanzee is having a fine old time on the beach with three clueless bimbos. And, uh, but I gotta wrap this up, guys, because I need to, uh, join my clueless, lovable friends at the Kerrville Folk Festival. And it's time to take Sancho Panza to the dog sitter. He does not know this. It's time to go to the dog sitter, Sancho Panza. Sancho Panza likes the concept of ceiling fans. Bye, guys.